Satchmo, the Duke, the Count, and the Earl, peculiar American royalty. They once roamed the globe, musical ambassadors of goodwill, but the place they called home was New York, 52nd Street to be exact. The clubs are all gone now, but jazz is everywhere, just like the beautiful songbird, Lila B. If you've never heard her sing, you either hate music or booze or go to bed early. When Des were in town, you couldn't get a ticket if you triple parked in front of City Hall. Of course Des loved her. I loved her. Everybody loved her. But Lila B. loved a dangerous mobster named Johnny Dye, the only sour note in her repertoire. Baby. You're late. Well, I'm not worth waiting for. You are. Mm. Listen, I want you to take this gun. <laughs> you ever hear of flowers? Hey, flowers are for funerals. Come on, take it. Come on, take it. Let's go. Listen. All right. Slide in. Listen, slide in, slide in. Get it! Get it! Get it! Possession of narcotics. Put your hands on the hood of the car. All right, frisk him. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Hey, can it, flat top? I've heard that song before. Yeah? Well, you're going to be hearing the second chorus all the way downtown. Cough him and get in the back of the car. Come on, hands behind your back. Come on. Come on. Step forward. Come on. You got nothing. Really? I'm talking to nothing. Put him in my car. Let's go, buddy. Stand down. Repeat. Stand down. The band wailed on as Johnny took a dive and Lila B. vanished into the night. The ballad of the mobster and the songbird had just begun. Before the final chords would play, the music wouldn't be the only thing that was hot.
Kurt Vonnegut said, historians will congratulate us for very little other than our clowning and our jazz. My pal Des Long was a great clown and a jazz legend, as free with the high notes as he was tight with a C note. It was always a gas when Des blew into town, but on this gig, the gas would be explosive. It sounds great, Des. Oh, shut it off. I can't stand it. What's the matter? I thought you liked it. I can't stand to hear myself playing when I'm not getting paid. Relax. You'll be getting paid tonight. Lou's is going to be packed. You know, old Abe was into ugly chicks. What? It's true. Smart guy, Lincoln. You see, a pretty girl can do anything, but an ugly girl has to do everything. <laughs> Mike, Grady's reserving us some seats at the bar tonight. Good. Now, here's a girl who can do anything she wants to. Bell to meet Des Long. Oh, I love you. You do? Your music. I love your music. Oh, I love your... your knuckles. See, now I know why you blow that trumpet so well. Because you're just full of hot air. Thank you. Mike, what would I have to give her for one little kiss? Chloroform? Oh. Now get out of here. I got work. I'm to going. Do. Will you pick me up tonight at the hotel? I'm allergic to cabs. But riding in them or paying for them? Oh, this is a tough room. How you doing? Is it this long? Yeah. My friend says he's good. Good. He's the best. Right up there with Armstrong, Baker, and Gillespie. What do you got? Turkey with mustard. Yeah. I didn't order this. Well, the Velda says that's healthier than a corned beef. Yeah, tell that to the turkey. Come on, we got work to do. It was another routine day. Missing persons, unfaithful wives, deadbeat dads. But at the 35th, Skip and Barry Lawrence were grilling a guy who was dead meat if he didn't start singing. You guys are a bunch of comedians. You got nothing. You're wasting your time. I don't know nothing. I ain't going anywhere. I'll be out here in an hour. You can't rent this one at Blockbuster. Yeah, I want to talk to my mouthpiece. No, you're going to talk to us now. I look like a jerk off to you. I know my rights. We took this earlier tonight. It's fantastic. You, Johnny, die with a gym bag full of money and a warehouse full of narcotics? My boys picked up your posse about an hour ago. Johnny, you're going down. Third strike. You're never getting out. I'll kill myself before I go into can. What's the matter, Johnny? Not enough garlic in the prison mess? Hey, you know what? Hey, 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 sit down, sit down. Skip, sit down. Look at this. Tough guy. That's how you treat taxpayers? Obviously, you've confused him with an umpire. That's a big mistake. One phone call from me, a federal drug task force walks through that door, and you're bunking with Noriega until pigs fly. Hey, do what you gotta do. Call. I don't care. Do it. Call. What do you want? We want you to sing like a canary. Like a canary? Look, pal, I'm no rat. You live like a rat, you die like a rat. I ain't no rat. We want your boss, Vito. You want Don Vito? <laughs> what are you guys, both high on glue? I think out Don Vito, I end up in a bag of dog food. Nah. I'm authorized to put you in a witness relocation program. New identity, place to live, money in your pocket. Where'd you find this guy? <laughs> I'm gonna roll the dice on my life for that. Now, you gotta do better than that, pal. A lot better. Prisons are all full, Johnny. Rooms are very crowded. Mm -hmm. And we all know how fond you are of tiny spaces. You see, your last stretch, six trips to the infirmary for panic attacks. Claustrophobia. I can't do it. No way. I'm dead anyway, so what's the point? This ain't good enough. I ain't doing it. Forget it. Not our way. I'm offering you another chance, and I'm a fair man. And that's why you got five seconds to make up your mind. Four, three, two. All right! All right. Get a wire on him. It's gonna be fun, Johnny. You and me working together. Hey, hands off me, you crumb. You did good. I hate that guy. I hate him, too. You did the right thing. Caught between the grinding wheels of justice and the code of honor he swore to in a blood oath to Don Vito, Johnny Dive was about to take the plunge. With a police wire taped to his chest and butterflies in his stomach, Johnny entered the lion's den, playing the role of big shot and first lieutenant for the last time. Because Johnny Dive was about to break the underworld's most sacred tenant. Thou shalt not squeal to the cops.
He'd spent his whole life acting tough. His life now hung by a fragile thread. The man with the volcanic temper had to play it cool. Let me see that eye. Stay away from this guy. Go in the office and wait there. We'll take care of him. Go ahead. Hey, down, Peter, how you doing? How you doing, Johnny? Take a seat, take a load off. So how's Trix? Uh, well, you know, Trix are down. Vice cops just busted five of my best girls, you know. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But uh, nothing's too bad. You know, pharmaceuticals are doing pretty good. How good is good? Well, I haven't tallied Queens yet, but between Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Manhattan, Quarter of a milk. But it'll be kidding me, you know? Ah, uh, you know, I'm... I don't know. Come on, Johnny. It's good for the digestion. All right. How's it look? Salute. Ah. Salvador, what are you trying to do? Kill me with this heat? Relax. You look tense. Take off your jacket. I'm all right. Your jacket off. Ah, ain't that better? Yeah. So, how's that songbird of yours? What's her name? Uh, Lily. Lila. Lila. Ah, she's on the road, you know, singing, doing this, doing that. You know how it is. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like asking for trouble, but uh, a dame like that, you know, hot to trot, in all these hotel rooms, you know, with these schmoes coming up with their expense account, and away from the wire, with plenty of cash, you know. Sounds like she could dump your ass for one of the salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry. Not to worry. Lila's with me. Sure she is. Yeah. All the girls are with you. Hey, that's just something that I don't need. Yeah, Junior, what is it? Hey, Jack. You know, Johnny. How you doing, Johnny? Hi, Johnny. How are you? <coughs> what are you doing here? Well, a little something important. You're interrupting us. Oh. Sorry, I, I just need some money, Dad. Again with this money. How many years are you going now to this uh, law school? It's hard. Hard? Yeah, head is hard. <laughs> I hate lawyers. The only good lawyer is Clarence Darrell. Yeah, but he's dead. Exactly my point. Have a glass of wine. Thanks. You stupid. Hey, hey, hey. Take it easy. What the hell? Jackie, you like shirt? Yeah, what about that shirt? What's this? Open a shirt. Oh, yeah? All right, can you hear me out there, you pigs? He's busted. We gotta get him out of there. Call for backup. All units, come on, let's move it. Look, I had no choice. I had no choice. Backup, now, now! You rat bastard! I trusted you! I wish you dead! Dead! Let's do it! I want you dead! I want your family dead! I want you! I want your poor mother dead! Police, freeze! roll of the dice had crapped out. Now he was marked for death as a mob informant. Give me an APB on a Johnny Dive! But first, they'd have to find him. Johnny Dive was on the lam. But Skip Gleason and Barry Lawrence were about to shear the black sheep of Vito's crime family. Junior. Put him in the courtroom. It's empty. Hey, hey I, I, can, I can get a phone call. That's right, Junior. Call your father. Tell him to drop your tuition money off here, because that's where you'll be until we pick him up. Go on. I want information out of that kid there, and I want it now. 
You're gonna have to wait, Barry. I got a rookie cop in surgery with a bullet in his chest. I got a few questions of my own. Well, we'll talk to them together, okay? All right. You be the pussycat. I'll be the bear. Every family has one, the screw-up. Junior was the soft underbelly of Vito's mom. He knew enough to be dangerous if he talked, but not enough to be of service to his daddy. Where is your father? I just don't know. I got a little something I want to ask you, Junior. Mm -hmm. 17 people get on a city bus. The bus makes four stops before it gets to the cemetery. At all the stops, seven people get on the bus. At every other stop, one person gets off the bus. Now, the question I have for you is how many people are left on the damn bus when it gets to the freaking cemetery? Huh? Answer me! God, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Better answer him. Come on, Junior. Can you re repeat the question, please? 17 people get on a city bus. The bus makes four stops on the way to the cemetery. At every stop, seven people get on the bus. At every other stop, one person gets off the bus. How many people are left on the bus when it gets to the cemetery? Answer me! Six! Well, what does this have to do with the case? Everything and nothing. Junior. You're up to your twisted little tongue in this crap. We've got you on tape. I didn't do nothing. You were there. That's all that matters to us. And if the officer dies... Constantinople is a really big word. If you can't spell it, you're a really big dope. I don't understand. But... You don't have to understand, son. You just do your best. Constantinople is a really big word. If you can't spell it, you're a really big dope. Constantinople. C O N S T A N T T T I P O L A. Wrong. It. I T. If you can't spell it, you're a really big dope. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many people are on the bus. I don't know where the hell Constantinople is. And I don't know where my daddy ran off to. All right, all right, all right. Sit down. We're not going to get anything out of this loser bastard. Let's cut him loose. Am I free to go? Uh... I'll get back to you on that. The cops and the mob were after Johnny Dive, but Vito knew something the cops didn't. The key to Johnny was Lila B, and the key to Lila was my pal Des Long. While Des worked on his long tones in his hotel room, a hired hitman worked the lock to his door. service I ordered a shotgun shut up chubby where's Lila I'll ask chubby when I see him where is she if I knew you think I'd be sitting here alone hey easy easy you're gonna tell me where she is she better be out in the street with a catcher's mitt <laughs> oh that was unnecessary what's the matter with you you lip off again and I'm gonna blow off your lips not the lips Des, it's Mike get, get rid of him uh, Mike, I'm busy. Uh, you and Betsy better come back later. Well, we really took care of that guy. Hey, while you're down there, you want to get my trumpet? You sure know some funny people. That guy was a scream. What do you want? He wanted Lila. Well, who doesn't? Uh. Hey, we better get going. I got to hit a pawn shop on the way to the job. Skip, get a street cleaner over to the Largo Hotel. We got a stiff sticking out of a manhole. Thanks. Right. Come on, let's go. 
Three rounds from Betsy sent Vito's goon nine stories to his death. Now I was involved, but the show must go on, so we swung by a pawn shop to see a man about a horn. Man brought this one in last week. Said Dizzy used to wail on. Give it <laughs> Dizzy Gillespie or Dizzy Dean? I hope you're having better luck getting a hat. I'm working on it. You know, a hat says a lot about a guy. That one says bachelor. Now, this one, I know you're going to dig. Go ahead. If I wanted to dig, I'd use this one I came in here with. I need a horn that'll do Gabriel proud. Now, trust me, now, that one is practically new. Mike, give this a listen. <laughs> You take credit cards? Why? What have you heard? Is that sweet or what? I think you picked a winner, Des. How much? Oh, 80 bucks. 40? 90? 30? 100 even? Keep talking, I got kids to feed. You might spot me 80, will you? Des, I don't know if I got 80 bucks. Plus, I, I got to pay for all these hats. How much are they, by the way? Four bucks. Each? For all of them. They say never mix business with pleasure, but whoever said that never did business with Des Long and his all-stars. Lou's bar was packed with jazz freaks bopping to the beat, all hoping the elusive Lila B would cap a perfect evening by dropping in to sing a set. I was hoping Lila would make an appearance for a different reason. I needed some answers from her if I was gonna find Johnny Dive before the mob found him. pleasure for us to be back here in the Big Apple, the city that never sweeps. I feel right at home. I've just been here an hour, and already somebody's tried to kill me. Critics. No, no, no the critics, I, they can't kill me. I still owe them money. <laughs> More drums. Now, at this time, uh, time uh, we come to the portion of our show where we like to introduce the band. Uh, Ross, I'd like you to meet Fred. <laughs> Fred, I'd like you to meet uh, Jake. And uh, Jake, I like this and everything. So I can I did the guy we squeegeed off the sidewalk. Let's talk outside. Too much like me. Good night, girls. So who was he? He's an imported hood. Robert Baroni worked out of Philly. I guess he won't be heading for Broadway. Well, we're gonna bury him in a soup can. Any idea who he worked for? Uh, the Campo Franco clan. Uh, my guess is that uh, he was working for one of the local families. Now, look, Mike, I gotta get out of here. Maggie threw out her back, changing the water heater. Oh, I'm sorry. Give him my best. Well, look who's here. Hello, Junior. Come to hear the music? Yeah. Sure. Where you been? Law school. Oh, excellent. Your father's going to need a good lawyer. Sorry. Got to go. Hey, Habib! Hey! What's the hurry? Try not to kill anyone else tonight, huh? I'm going to kill a couple of beers. What's the rush? The case would wait. I was off the clock ready to let the music calm this savage beast. There's nothing like jazz. Black and white, rich and poor, blue collar, white collar. All the labels vanish when the lights are low, the beer is cold, and the band is hot. And on this night, Dez was on fire. That's when Lila appeared to pour on some gasoline. For a lovely Lila B. So beautiful. And a great singer, a lovely girl, a lovely person, a great mind. Thank you, it's good to be back. Oh, your friend is good, too.
She's good. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. That was great, guys. Oh, thank you. Lila, I want you to meet my old friend, Mike Hammer. Pleasure. Pleasure's mine. I met somebody who was looking for you at Desert's Hotel. Who might that be? A Philly hood named Robbo Baroni. Name does nothing for me. A goon with a gun. Well, that's the worst kind. Mm. Any idea why he might want to see you? Maybe just Dick's music. Yeah, well, now he's playing nothing but flat notes. Mm. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming to the show tonight. See you, Des. Lila, don't leave now. We're just getting warmed up. Gotta fly. Come on, baby. Come with me, my dear. Get your hands off my piano player. We're working. So are we. You might want to give Cal Eden a call. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is this? This is none of your business. They're all the same. You owe me a quarter, will you? Quarter? Hey. Now you owe me three grand and 25 cents. Yes, OK, good. You're right, Mike. She's great. She can sing, too. And Cal? Dez. Dez Long. Listen, how long would it take you to get over to Lou's bar? Cal, this is not a quiz. Really, could you come over here pronto? Lila just confiscated Ross. Of course you'll get paid. I can sing also. Really? Maybe he can let me do a letter. Do a number. He'll yank our liquor license. <laughs> Hi, Des. Hi. Do you need a singer? I'm already paying alimony to three singers. Mm, what about yoga teacher? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Lila being so elusive? She marches to her own drummer. this out. Isn't that my pen? Somebody shot the piano player. Ross was dead. Now the cops wanted a word with the jilted bass player, Fred. You looking good, baby. <laughs> you are looking so fine. <laughs> Ooh, does that feel better? I thought it would. <laughs> A little bit more oil will make it feel even better. Frederick Beale, police, open up. I heard you, man. I'll be right back. What? You alone? I was. Funny. Where have you been tonight? Where have you been, man? I don't have to tell you anything. What time is it anyway? Time for you to say bye-bye to the bad attitude. The missus out for the evening? Man, what the hell is this all about? You got a warrant? Let's go. We'll explain it to you at the station house. Is this legal? Yeah. Oh, While Skip's son Jackie was bringing in Fred for questioning, Skip had Des and me down at headquarters for an all-night jam session. That's Lila's gun, isn't it, Des? Lila never would have shot a guy like Ross. He could back her up on anything. He didn't answer the question. 
All right, I did it. I took Lila's gun and popped Grouse because he was playing in the wrong key. Yeah, sure. The only thing is, you were standing right next to me when the shot was fired. Tell me something. Why did Lila have the piece to begin with? Johnny Dive gave it to her for protection. Johnny Dive? The uh, mob informant? No, Father Johnny Dive. How many Johnny Dives can there possibly be? Come on, Skip. You don't really think that Lila killed Ross? Well, she sure got some explaining to do. I'm gonna have ballistics run this gun. You go to the hotel and stay there. No, wait, 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 wait. That's too dangerous. Let him hold up at my place. No, I've seen your place. I'd rather take my chances at the hotel. I got the little Richard suite. There's a jar of olives in the refrigerator. Oh. Musicians. I got another one in the office. Picked up the bass player. You want to sit in? Sure, sure. Went to the alley, they were both getting into Ross's car. And that's when you got upset? Yeah, I was pissed. Lila's a tease, man. What'd you do? I split. Before or after Ross got shot? Before. Did you hear anything? Man, the only thing I heard were ice cubes and a glass. I was in a gin mill two blocks away. And you went straight home? That's where you picked me up, isn't it? Any idea where we can find Lila? No one finds Lila, man. She finds you. Okay. You're free to go. Don't take any out-of-town gigs. Yo, can I get a lift home? Not from me. I got a subway token. Oh, man. So was Lila, Mike. Come on, Skip. This was a professional job. And what about the rings? Rings? Whenever Ross played the piano, he kept about 10,000 bucks of rings on his fingers. So? When they found him in the alley, his hands were clean. So it's a robbery? Or a cover-up. Those rings have inscriptions. What's the deal? It is always where it is needed. That's mystery to you, pal. Did you bring down Lila B? We don't know she did it, but we know enough to talk to her. I am the district attorney. I say find her and call her junkie butt down here. Junkie? Jazz singer junkie, same thing. Pinhead. Pinhead. Pinhead, district attorney, same thing. Hey, Dad. Uh, sorry, Captain Gleason. We haven't been able to find a guitar player yet. So find him. Right. My kid. Now I know why they call it the Thin Blue Line. With Lila B. suddenly cast as Exhibit A in Barry Lawrence's murder investigation, it was time for me to get my band in tune. And Nick was late for the downbeat. Hey, guys. How was Hockey? Well, look at his eye. That's actually from my date last night. What, she whistle you for high sticking? It's very funny. All right, time to climb out of the penalty box and get to work. We gotta find Lila. Nick, I want you to tie a can to the bass player. Fred? Wherever he goes, you go. I want to know what he has for lunch and what kind of toothpicks he uses. All right. Well, how's your singing voice? Fine when I'm in the shower. Ooh, that sounds like a great act. <laughs> Lila's piano player, Cal Eden, was tickling the ivories at a rehearsal hall. They'll detract him down, hoping to sweet talk him into a lead. I had to find Lila before the DA had her singing in Sing Sing, or Vito's Guidos had her playing the harp. That's sweet. You're a couple of lumps yourself, honey. A uh, Veldo, right? Right. I uh, need to work on a song. OK. Uh, what do you got? Danny Boy? Hmm, what key? What key does Lila sing it in? Oh, God, depends on her mood. Well, I heard her sing the other night, so, um, play it like she's in a good one. All right. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all is falling it's you it's you and i'm a spy hey not bad <laughs> well i'm no lila and i'm no count basie 
Cal? I'd really like to meet Lila. I mean, I'm a big fan, and if I could just meet her once. Well, I can work that. She's going to meet me here tomorrow morning at 10. Well, thank you. You're a real sweetheart. Well, you're a sweet everything. Mm -hmm. Later that night, Nick took the A train up to Harlem, trailing Dez's bass player Fred to a blues club, where Nick hoped to blend in with the crowd. What is there, a cover charge tonight? No, we luck. It's ladies' night. at all. Well, uh, what can you do, baby? Hey, Casper, what the hell you doing talking to my lady? Relax, man. I'm a friendly ghost. Oh, you about to be a ghost star right here. You teach that boy some manners of mine. <laughs> hey, I don't want any trouble, all right? You should have thought of that before you came in here and tried to steal my lady, all right? Yo, yo, Lamont, what's up, dog? He's cool, man. He's with me. Yeah, yeah, we're friends, man. It's cool. Right, bro? Don't push it, Opie. I got to talk to Lila. Like, yeah, yeah, man. And you? Come on, man. Don't, oh, don't baby, go there. Look, my not today, man. Lila was a woman on the run, but even runners have to rest eventually. She lived on the road. A suitcase was her home. But I played a hunch. While Velda and Nick did the legwork, I did some tail work in Dez's hotel room. What better place for Lila to hide than the place that's already been searched? Hello, Lila. You looking for Des? I'm looking for what I'm always looking for. A way out. Lila. You want a way out of this? There's only one way. And that's to find out what's going on. Now, you gotta help me. You gotta answer some questions. Now, sit down. What were you doing that night behind Luz? A friend of mine got killed. With your gun? I'm in pretty deep. How deep? Lila. I want to help you, but you've got to trust me. Now, did you shoot Ross? It's all because of what I saw. What'd you see? District Attorney Barry Lawrence, open up, Mr. Long. Attorney Barry here. Lawrence, open up, Mr. Long. Des Long, this is the DA. I have a warrant. Okay, open it up. Hey, Barry. You here to make up the bed? No, I'm here to make an arrest. I have a warrant for Lila B. Yeah, well, Lila be gone. Where's the horn player? I don't know, cleaning a spit valve. Could you be any less cooperative? Barry, you insult me. You know I would walk through fire for you. All right, we'll make it machine gun fire. Before this hits the papers tomorrow, I'll have her. You can count on it. Yeah, by the time that happens, I'll be holding the Winter Olympics in hell, pal. Uh, arrest him. For what? My own personal amusement. You got nothing to hold me. You got nothing to hold Lila. I got a gun with her prints on it. And I got a slug from that gun in the body of a dead piano player. But you don't have Lila. No, but I got something better. I got you. 
What's the charge? Harboring a fugitive. Accessory. Uh, liberate his girlfriend for him. And speaking of accessories, what do we have here? This will make a wonderful Exhibit A. Yeah. Speaking of exhibits, you're going to look great in the wax museum. Get him out of here. Well, I don't even get a man off the pillow. We'll have plenty of sweets for you in jail. I was headed for the Who's Gal, a jailbird, accused of a crime I didn't commit. But the songbird was free, taking flight down a fire escape. What was it Lila had seen? What did she witness to make her the target of a mafia hit? There'd be no sleep for me. I'd toss and turn, trying to piece together the puzzle. But as that great philosopher of song Frank Sinatra once said, Whatever gets you through the night 